Mr. Walton, did you make contact with Alien? Were you taken to another planet, to a mothership? How did they communicate with... Can you tell me what they look like? Can you tell me how many of them there were? Were you, were you given food? But the teachers are alive. They're not books. They are the very living essences of nature itself. What a strange person. Unbelievably powerful supercomputer that's running our reality, and we don't have a clue yep. as to how to operate it. So when maybe you or somebody else creates an AGI system, and you get to ask her one question, what would that question be? What's outside the simulation? Say in your mind, say to yourself, I am more than my physical body because I am more than physical matter. I can perceive that which is greater than the physical world. There is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Broadcasting from a shack on a hill in the Mossy Creek Bottoms of Cane Creek, Arkansas. This is Lighting the Void. I'm your host, Joe Roof. Welcome back. It's Tuesday night, the 23rd. And tonight, we welcome back very special guest, Brian Scott. He's back with us from realityrevolution.com. Uh, interesting, fantastic conversation we had with him last time. And we're going to be talking about the mind-blowing movement to hack your reality. Uh, he's got a fantastic show on YouTube and... He's uh, of a sound mind like the rest of us are here, trying to explore the ways of consciousness. Uh, I want to thank Lon Mallow Duquette for coming on the show last night. That was an awesome show. Had a cool time with him. Also, uh, thank the patrons for being patient with me, for waiting on the new Outside the Shack series to come out as well, as we're still transitioning with the station and doing everything. We're doing a lot of stuff at once. A lot of fun stuff, actually. So just stay tuned all that stuff is coming all right um i want to thank the network sponsors too get the t.com ancient life oil.com and metaphorical archaeology also give ufo seekers a follow follow them on twitter go to their website ufo seekers.com the only people to back in ufo investigations if you want the sound and solid truth when it comes to investigating what's really going on in the field of ufology and all that stuff up there in the sky uh, they're very um, open-minded, healthily skeptical about things, and it's, uh, I mean, Tim's my brother from another mother, so he's putting out good work out there. Um, any announcements? I don't, I don't have any announcements at this moment, right, other than just stay tuned. That's about it. Um, but so we're going to get right into this. Uh, Brian has been on the show with us once already. It was really cool to have him on. And Brian's an author, a motivated speaker, a thought leader, life coach, transformation coach, influencer, podcast host for the Reality Revolution podcast and the Laptop Lifestyle podcast. And he is also an artist and he studied and worked on consciousness expansion for 20 years. And his primary goal is to find that spark to unleash your great potential. And the website is therealityrevolution.com. Thank you for coming back on the program, brother. It's good to have you back. Thanks for having me, Joe. 
how you been? How are things going? What's going on in uh, your world? I've never been better. It's uh, been wonderful times for me. I know that the, it's been tough out there in the world, but I, I've never been better. Things get better every day. It's uh, It's been great. The weather was beautiful today. How about you? Yeah, I can tell you things are getting better. It's kind of like a weird energy where things are getting better, yeah. but um, yeah, like it's definitely. weird. It's like a, even sometimes I feel guilty. Like I shouldn't. Everything shouldn't be so good right now. You know? so, <laughs> yeah, right. But I'm kind. I kind of have that hermit energy. So being in a pandemic was never a problem for me. You know, yeah, so me I'm just hanging out at home with my girlfriend. You know, so. Me either, but dude, I have been getting cage crazy. Honestly, I'm ready to get out and yeah. explore and travel and do to do certain things and yeah, experience certain things. That. So, but uh, well, yeah, it's all about. I know we were talking before the show about the Golden Dawn, and it's funny that it's um, mm -hmm. you, you're always working on one side of that pinnacle or the next, man. But you got to live your life too. You know, you got to live your life. You got to take care of the yeah, mundane if, stuff. If it's fun, it's that's your life. Fun. You know. If it's if you're having fun and it's uh you know then it's it's always good so you know you find that that right balance but <laughs> absolutely um yes. so you know the last time uh, we were on the show we talked about uh what were we talking about where people could set up bir we were talking about like virtual reality DMT experiences or consciousness experiences or something like that where they were setting up virtual yeah we reality were talking for about eventually you know creating virtual reality meditations. That's uh, right. Where people could use virtual reality, uh, using law of attraction, quantum science, and create vivid imaginary realities to help amplify their meditations. Something I'm working on, and uh, we get closer every day. So, yeah. It's a brave new world coming, huh? For yeah. Sure. Absolutely. But I think it's just part of it. It's the. I do see the world is uh, probably with your show as well. The world's waking up and we're starting to really look at consciousness as this incredible thing. And you can see it. You can see it. Uh, even people that normally wouldn't be concerned about that stuff are, are starting to really look at it because there's a change going on in the world. You can feel it. Yeah. And speaking of changes, I think a lot of people would be interested in not just the consciousness part, but the fact that you have another podcast called the laptop lifestyle man that's that's something i think everybody wants especially now when we're all getting flushed back into our homes trying to figure yeah. out how to make uh, a living or make money or survive with uh, online or creatively i mean i've been doing this for a while but now it's you know what not only is it picking up but it's also yeah. like the demand for it is picking up too in certain areas and certain markets right. and stuff you notice that? Well, well, I found when when I started helping people achieve their goals that uh, I almost always came to helping them find a way to be self-employed at home. Because uh, once you get that perfect lifestyle where you're working from home and you're your own boss and it's actually pretty easy to do, it's it's exciting. You know, then you don't have you don't have to, a boss to answer for. You're free to do what you want when you want. Uh, there's so many different things available. A lot of people get locked into that nine to five job and they, it's, they don't realize it's just like just so close and easy to find something to to make money at, to live at home. So, yeah, I've been that's something that was always my goal, even when I was working at like uh, mortgage companies and stuff like that. I was like, I don't want to be working here anymore and wearing a stupid tie, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. 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 Answering to somebody always wanting to right, know, yeah. you know, like, did you do your job? Did, did you hit right. your quota? Did you take you your could, lunch break on time? You know, that kind right. of stuff. I mean, it, how much is that worth? And then you start to really learn about what money is worth. Do you want to make uh, $50,000 at a horrible job where you that's all you do? Or do you want to make $40,000 a month at a better job where, you know, it's it's also about how much time you spend. And that's why working at home, even if you are employed, is such a huge transformation a lot of bosses will let you if you ask the right way and present it in the right way uh that you can work at home even if you're working at a company now so there's something about it and once you get some people they struggle because when they wake up and they have to be their own boss <laughs> yeah well you, know, you uh you've been reading a little tim ferris by any chance that book oh yeah absolutely yeah um, Tim's tim ferris is like my personal guru i i think he's amazing everything i'll read anything he writes uh, for sure absolutely you know that 
the thing about it is, is I got into, like, I started out doing online marketing stuff just for money and I was doing great. Like, I was like, man, I quit selling cars, but I was like selling, it was all about selling stuff about making money online and everything. And it still wasn't doing the trick for me. And I was like, you know what? I want to talk about the interesting stuff. And that's why it kind of became hard for me a little bit. Like it's, I'm starting to understand how to do it now. And with implementing that old stuff I learned, but it's like, okay, uh, we, we got to find, all you got to do is find the supply and demand and then, uh, over deliver, right? Like fine. If somebody right. needs something, you make sure that whatever your price point is, they it's over deliver, right? Like, so they like, right. man, this is a great deal. You get word of mouth going and you're good to go. That's all there it's is true. to it. For me, I got lucky because I was working. I, I like my house was like during the 2008 um, mortgage crisis. My house was um, going to go in foreclosure, and nobody was hiring. The market had collapsed. I didn't want to go work anyway. It was like kind of a nasty, gnarly job, and so I oh, I got to sell some stuff in my house, man. And so I whatever I could find in my house to sell, I would sell books, DVDs, cassette tapes, anything on eBay. And then one day, something somebody bought, I couldn't find it, and I went and found it somewhere else and bought it. And I realized, wow, I just made money and I didn't have the item. <laughs> and I just think like, they yeah. spent six bucks. I found it somewhere else for four bucks. I made two bucks on it. It was like the best two bucks I ever made because I didn't actually have any inventory. And so there's this whole infrastructure of the internet that works in a certain way where people can buy something from you that you don't necessarily have, but you can arrange for them, so somebody else to ship it to them. Mm-hmm. and everybody's happy right yeah so yeah <laughs> yeah it's that simple right like i did that right i don't know um, for me I, it was like i don't if somebody wants to talk to me on the phone customer service style i'm like maybe i don't want to have that customer like i found different jobs or businesses where i could keep my customer service online as much as i possibly could right that's part of what tim ferris teaches is like some customers are just not worth it you know, yeah. even no matter, you know, there's always that one customer that's gnarly or nasty. So, yeah, it depends. And you can never make happy and they're taking up right. all your time. Right. And exactly. Like, Look, man, I'll pay you to go away. How about that? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you'll get that customer that is, is okay, but it's, it's not worth it, yeah. you know, so. Right on. Yeah. So as far as um, the spiritual stuff goes, I mean, I got to tell you, dude, synchronicities, weird stuff, weird synchros have yeah. been happening here lately especially in like dreamland and astral travel world and it, it's, i haven't gone out of body yet as in a long time but i still these dreams i've got a dream journal full of just knickknack stuff that it's everybody is reporting major dreams if you've watched the the coronavirus dream people are saying that there that's that everybody is having these wickedly vivid dreams i just did an episode on dreams and i agree with you that you know we're going through the shift into fourth density right now and we're everything's happening because of it and it's going to continue it's so amazing it really is does it scary it's kind of scary though too right i mean well now that i understand i've been really researching this change and seeing that it's written about in all these different channeled works and all these different spirits everybody in dolores cannon talks about it she was from arkansas i'm pretty sure yeah right dolores and uh that's right and uh she has like she talked to like hundreds of different entities that we're all talking about this shift that's going on right now. And I didn't understand it for a long time. I think I understand it now. It's it's just a different evolution in consciousness going from the, you know, if you look at all the levels of consciousness you know, the rock to the insect, to the animal up into the human being. And what's the next level of consciousness? It's, it's kind of a group mind, right? Yeah. So when I, I interviewed Jim McCarty, who was a scribe for the law of one session, he explained it. Uh, essentially, as it's happened on other planets in the universe, uh, the Akashic record will become conscious mm. on the Earth. Uh, you don't have to be religious to believe that. It could literally be a scientific phenomenon that will occur at a certain threshold. And the place and area we're going through space, we're, we are gathering more light. Uh, and as we do, it's like more information. So we're slowly learning that we are all kind of one. We're seeing the truth of things. We respond to events differently. When we see something on the news, it feels like it's happening to us because we are seeing that there's this sort of oneness where a group mind that forms where we all are like, and and we don't want to admit it. And so it's kind of, we don't want to go insane. It's a slow process, but everybody's responding and acting in a different manner than they ever have before. 
And it's because we're all kind of going into this age of love and understanding where we get this we're, um, imagine eventually we'll all have access to the Akashic record, the record of everything that ever happened ever. Yeah, that's funny well, that's, too. Cause I was, I lawn my old kid was talking to, you know, he's a cultist. So I was talking to him last night right. and he said, man, I'm telling, I asked him about love and consciousness and he was like, well, he slowly started to figure out like love is, is the prime materia. It is the feeling, right? It is what creates everything. It's the ultimate creating machine, you know, yeah. as far as, um, uh, manifestation goes. So everybody focuses on, there's a lot of focus on manifestation. I want to manifest this, right, manifest, right. but that's the beginnings of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you get into wanting starts to happen faster because of this, but yeah. then it goes way beyond. Right. Right. And then that wakes you up. It, there's like this pressure cooker that happens. It's like, Oh, I want this not happening. Why is it not happening? What's going on? Right. And then there's a pressure cooker that happens. Just like, wait, then it starts waking you up. And I think, you know, uh, like uh, Abraham, or I would even say, didn't Neville Goddard, Goddard talk about uh, the feeling is the key or something like that? Yeah, um, yeah. The, his most famous book, The Feeling is the Secret. And Neville yeah. Goddard believed that he be, he was God and became God and then had a vision, that all of the visions exactly like the Bible and claimed that we would all have them. And one of the, the moments, it takes over a 1,200-day period, he meets love, the version of aspect of God that is pure love. It's like this huge transformation that um, he could see that nothing is animated without it, which is a bizarre thing. <laughs> but yeah, I could talk to Neville Goddard too. That that whole thing, he was awakening the Elohim, claiming that we were all Elohim in our skulls, slowly awakening. Mm. Um, but his gets pretty interesting when he's talking about, oh, there's no doubt about it. He's saying this is all happening for real to me. I'm a witness to all these events. So it's kind of interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. So do you believe in uh, when it comes to like star seeds, things like that? You believe in, th well, I hear that phrase tossed around a lot. And I used to be like, yeah, here we go. Star seeds, UFOs, right. super soldiers Me on too. Mars, or whatever. But right. there are some things that are happening in my life. And I think things that I got in, it happens on the show. I know they're happening in other people's lives. We're like, uh, yeah, that, yeah, this is like a real thing. I think. You know, I, I, I've been researching this and I, and I had several shows on it and it goes all the way back to like 19, there's an author named Williamson uh, that would ha interview some in, in some regressions and started getting communications that there are people planted like seeds, like apple seeds, just um, because we had a shift to a negative sort of density and they heard the call from all over the universe. This happens. And these people incarnated from other planets and it's been happening in three waves. Dolores Cannon claims it was in three waves. Uh, it's on so many levels. Who knows if it's real? But uh, if it is real, and I'm after I post that, I ask these questions, uh, and I'm getting so many people that claim that they are star seeds. And who am I to doubt them? You know, that's their personal thing. Some people may attach an identity to it. And I feel like there's a part of me that doesn't want to know. Like, if I found that out, it might take me away from my journey. Every time I start wanting to, because I'm a hypnotist, right? I've done past life regressions for multiple people. But if, for me personally, I don't want to know. There's some part of me that doesn't want to know if I am or not, right? But I do think there's something there, because the Dolores Cannon is so interesting, because she's interviewing hundreds of people that never knew each other in regressions that are claiming they can't come from different star systems. Uh, one of the most fascinating is when Dolores Cannon claims that she's channeling a being from the council of Saturn coming from eighth density was involved in the creation of this planet and that the earth was, we were not linking our hearts to our minds and we were on this apocalyptic doom course where the earth was going to, unless we could shift, right? Um, so many incredible things. The One of the largest channeled works ever Owaspe is talking about star seeds as well. If you ever read, which is hard to read that if, that book, uh, and of course, there's weird stuff like a Urantia and the Law of One is claiming that there are wonders and could literally name exactly because each person that incarnates gets approval according to some council that rules the solar system. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but that's what I've been able to find out. And I'm continuing to learn more and more 
And I would love to to talk to anybody that claims they are. Um, I find it fascinating. Yeah. Well, I have some questions about that because people are like, you hear that all the time. They're like, man, right, right. I, I had to have permission to, you know, like I, I came here to do what I'm doing now. Like this was my path or whatever. And then I, I watch these specials on TV and like, there's these people that are in uh, great suffering because they sneeze 24 seven, just over and over and over again. And it's right. some kind of weird tick. And I'm like, why in the hell would anybody want to come to earth and do that? You know, right. Like that doesn't make sense to me. Maybe, right. m- maybe they said, well, I want to come to earth and experience some type of weird suffering that no one else does because I want that experience, which helps me define another experience, which is total bliss. Well, I think the majority of us, if you look at what's going on on the earth, that the majority of us are just caught like in a spider web. We're all these powerful eternal beings that are just, that got caught here uh, over this experiment and the way that the system and the, the, the a variety of events, uh, they're just playing out the same old karmic lessons over and yeah. over and over again. Eventually we're in the same class. Like imagine if you got to sixth grade and you just had to repeat it like over and over again. That's kind of, we have a planet full of people that couldn't get to the next class. Right. Uh, because of yeah. all these crazy events. Now who knows about what really happened in the past with, with Atlantis and Mars, and if you read Dernvalo Melchizedek's account, who knows uh, uh, what really happened? If you read like the Secret Doctrine and and what what really happened and why we're such a crazy planet? We've been, and we have such an unknown past, and what would actually happen? Why we're stuck here? You know? Yeah, it's because... trippy, man. I think we can be our for sure. We can be our own superheroes or our worst villains at any exactly. point in time, you know. Exactly. Take a guy like Alan Watts, who I love listening to, oh, probably yeah. the one of the best speakers on spiritual philosophy, uh, philosophy the esoteric, everything of all you know? time, of all time. But I, yet, I'm in love with Alan Watts. Yeah, he was a tortured man in a way. Yeah, you know. Uh, with, I with just a, read his addiction. biography. Yeah, and. You're right. He was. He had, you know, had drinking problems, and uh, it was it's not reflected by the knowledge that he showed in those wonderful lectures. You know, trippy, isn't it? It is the thing about like, why yeah. didn't? Because I'm the kind of guy that like, if I have a problem, I'll probably get on the radio. I don't want to appear to be uh, giving advice, even though I probably should a little bit here and there. I think everybody should, but I'd be like, hey audience i got a drinking problem can y'all help me get rid of it <laughs> that's kind of right, right. i am but it's like right right who maybe i shouldn't do those things because i don't know right. i am the kind of person that i've always been this way where i'm willing to step out and say things or feel things in front of people that they might be afraid to because i think i think that's kind of what holds us back you're talking about earlier the sinking the mind with the heart well right now uh, well, as we move, especially when Gemini, this Gemini energy was here, that mm-hmm. when you look in that mirror, man, it's like you have a one feeling with your heart, but your mind's saying, no, do this. But your heart's like, no, do this. How do you sync those right. two? What do you do? It's actually a coordination between the mind and the heart that's happening. The heart is not two hearts, but I understand what you're saying. And the best system that I've ever read on how to coordinate your heart with actual written by a physicist uh, is reality transurfing. It's a, it's about a 900 page book written by this Russian physicist that discusses all these different systems in kind of move, maneuvering through realities. And the big emphasis is on reducing importance, but the, but the actual to have power, magical power, he, he makes the uh, analogy that all of magic is actually just enacting this particular system. Uh, if your heart is in coordination with your mind, you can pretty much do anything. And that's when you can actually affect the outside world around you because the heart is at, like connected to the space of all future events. It knows everything, but it doesn't, you know, it kind of has to communicate with you in a different way. And the mind thinks it knows everything. And if they don't get along, it's like a, a broad band light. But when they get along and they are in agreement, it's like a laser. Uh, if that makes sense. Blissful and, too. Uh, yeah, it's blissful and 
Uh, I think we're just starting to learn to listen to our heart. And it's a, it's a, it's an ongoing process. We learn about our instincts. We we start to evaluate. I think oftentimes the heart will knows what for what we don't want to do, but sometimes it's indifferent. So sometimes you you your heart might not tell you, but that means that's not major danger, right? And so you can start to coordinate these and and it's everybody has a different way of accessing intuition but i think it's fascinating and it's it is in that coordination of your heart and mind i had the the worst scenario that ever happened to me when i was working in tech support and i hated Uh sitting in that it was so crushing man i used to escape work and go to these parks and just meditate and stuff but it just it got to the point where one day i think my heart was louder than my mind just and I just right. stood up and I was like, listen, uh, you guys have a good day. Like, I'm not doing this anymore. I don't know what y'all right. are going to do. And I, as I was walking out of the building, my mind's going, what the hell are you doing? What the hell are you doing? But I couldn't stop, man. Like, I had to go. Right. But perfect that's, example. Is that a yeah. perfect example? <laughs> because I well, wonder obviously, sometimes. if you hadn't have done that, you wouldn't be doing what you're enjoying now right? Yeah. You'd still be doing something like that. The only way that you can get from here to there, your heart knows it wants to get you where you are now, right? So you might have thought you were making a mistake, but you just start trusting your heart more and more. Uh, that If the mind can start trusting it more and more, and they can actually communicate because there's more brain cells in the heart. Mm. And it's amazing that Dr. Joe Dispenza, when he has his amazing seminars, he, everybody, mm. he measures them. And creating heart mind coordination, the Heart Math Institute, uh, it's there's an actual thing where your brain waves are in coherence with the heart uh, on a physical level as well as just the mental understanding this little signals that we have. It's uh, I think it's the key. I really do. I totally do too. And, and we're up against our first break here. We're here with uh, Brian Scott. You guys, the go check out the book, the YouTube channel especially. He's got a very successful YouTube channel. Uh, I just went to YouTube and typed in the reality revolution that got me straight there. And there's a ton of awesome videos there as well. And you can grab his book, the reality revolution too, on Amazon. It's the Amazon number one bestseller, the mind blowing movement to hack your reality. We'll be right back. Stay with us. This is country music singer and void walker Jason Benoit. And when I need my fix on the world of magic and the capabilities of the human consciousness, I listen to Joe Roop right here on Lighting the Void Radio. This is Barbara Charlton from Metaphorical Archaeology. If you've ever had a traumatic paranormal experience, the effects of it may stay with you for years. Uh, Who do you talk to? You can't go to conventional help. What we do is we use emotional freedom techniques or tapping to actually neutralize the effects of that event. Maybe when you tell the story now, your heart races and your palms get sweaty, you don't even want to think about it because you don't know how to neutralize that. That's what EFT tapping does. It neutralizes those emotions. The circuit that that was recorded on is gone. The energy flows freely and you're free of it. And that's what emotional freedom is all about. We offer this as a pro bono service, but this is something that I offer because no one, it seems, is helping people with these experiences. If you'd like to reach me, it's really easy. My cell phone is 214-995-3754. Please leave a message. I will get back to you as quickly as possible. Or you can email me barb.eft at gmail.com and eft stands for emotional freedom techniques reach out to me it's confidential this works you won't believe the results in your face all over the place we're online 24 7 24 7 you're listening to the hottest internet station all right man this is crow triple seven and you are listening to the fringe fm From a cave in the depths of your mind, it's Lighting the Void with Joe Root. The Fringe FM isn't just a radio station. We also provide services for all your audio production needs. If you are interested in live radio or pre-recorded podcasts, we're here to help. 
We even do audio enhancements and voiceovers if needed. If you want to do a podcast or live radio show, and even want the option to syndicate on terrestrial radio, from simple audio file enhancement to live production and call screening, we have you covered. We have worked with some of the best professionals in the business in order to provide coaching instruction for content creation, show structure, and more. Contact The Fringe Digital Media for more at info at thefringe.fm. That's info at thefringe.fm. Or call 501-777-5631 for a consultation. We all have that story to tell in our lives. The winds were howling. The ground shook. You could hear rushing water. And then history repeats itself. When there's no power, refrigeration fails. Stores with their shelves strip bare. ATMs can't operate. Deliveries stop. Then what? These events can last days or weeks. You need a plan. In statements made during recent interviews, FEMA Administrator Brock Long has repeatedly urged all Americans to understand three truths. FEMA is broke. The system is broken. If this is the new normal, Americans can't rely on federal cavalry when disaster strikes. Don't get caught out in the elements empty-handed. Prepare with us by going to preparewiththefringe.com and get your two-week food supply, 92 servings, eight food varieties with 25-year shelf life, normally $137 now only $75. Or get a month's supply, normally $247, now only $147 shipped in one business day. Just go to preparewiththefringe.com or call 888-440-7931. That's 888-440-7931. Get this great offer and be prepared while it lasts. Hey, I'm J.M. DeBoard, and when I want to talk about dreams, I look up my man, Joe Root, and his show, Lighting the Void. Welcome back. Brian Scott is our guest tonight. We're live on the Fringe FM. Stay tuned after the show for the secret teachings with Ryan Gable as we uh, will be upgrading the website, also upgrading the station. There's all kinds of stuff we're doing. I'm just saying, bear with us as we do these things. Um, And Brian, I am dead curious about this past life stuff, man. You have a, so you, a lot of people are asking questions about, man, I'm, you know, uh, I need to know who I was in a past life. I'm starting to have these visions, right. these kind of things, these memories. You have a, a free meditation on that, right? That kind of ju- helps jumpstart people with that. I do. I do. Just type in Brian Scott past life regression. Uh, and I also have a future life regression. You can check out your future life or your past life. And they're both designed um, to put you into that meditative state. And I've had, if you look through the comments, I've had people have memories of being in France in the 1800s, all kinds of different yeah, memories. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, some of these really advanced ones take a lot more time, but that's like a good beginner way to do it because because uh, you, you're kind of limited when you do a YouTube. You don't want it to be a three hour. I have some like that, but uh, in this case, it's a good starter. And if you get some glimpse or images, you could go further for sure. Right. What do you uh, hmm. that is pretty interesting, man. What 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 do you think about that, though? Like. There's a lot, every, every time I talk to people about their past life, they're always uh, Princess Diana or right. a high priestess or something. And I'm like, well, we're, there we're- is one very unusual possibility that's with all of this. Now, the Dolores Cannon material indicates that some of the star seeds, for instance, might be what is called imprinted, where they go to the, um, they go to the Akashic and they're given the memories of a life that they didn't actually live. And so she found out by going to talk to somebody in this this cosmic library in one of her books that they do that have imprints. So she couldn't completely trust the information. Uh, there's a, a new thought writer, Joseph Benner, who wrote The Impersonal Life, who talks about reincarnation, saying, if you're having a memory of a reincarnated event, you may just be remembering anything because you are God and you are one. You are actually God. We're all God. We're just experiencing it in this moment. So you can have a memory, but it's because it's just you accessing one of the billions of memories that are a part of you altogether. There's that argument. And then law of one, it's constant individualization. So they don't necessarily claim that. Uh, But 
there is different ways to analyze it. Some of it's real, some of it's not. In most cases, uh, it works against you, but there's some incredible spiritual leaders like Sadhguru uh, and Dronvalo Melchizedek, yeah. who are amazing, that have remembered their past lives completely. They're walking around. Can you imagine having two other lives and having completely vivid and total memory of them? They, yeah. they, they became so highly trained that they purposely reincarnated full memory and allowed it, you know. So I don't know. You know what I mean? Uh, it's, in, it, it's fascinating. But the law of one material really does talk about how the, re the science of reincarnation. And that to me is the most profound uh, metaphysical doctrine. If It's law of one dot info. If you know Man. about the law of one. Yes. Law of One dot info. Uh, it was a, a channeling done between 1981 and 1984 by three people. They had started to channel alien entities or UFOs, mostly from a, the Confederation. Uh, and then, you know, from like they, they tried it, they experimented on it for like 10 years. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, they had this huge channeling uh, from Raw. Ra inevitably claims to be a social memory complex. So like the uh, living Kashika record, like we talked about before, uh, of the planet Venus from 3 billion years ago, that's still alive, advancing through densities, going next level. It's like a six and a half density being who had been to the earth in the past, had created or been a part of creating pyramids, uh, but had left because their teachings were misinterpreted. And they taught about the science of reincarnation and where you reincarnate and how you reincarnate. Uh, it's pretty fascinating. Uh, I could go further. The, 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 what they're saying is that the choice that you're given as you move up through densities, you, you begin to make a choice. If, you're, if you as a soul are service to others or service to just yourself and you know, a small group of people have moved up in density in the service to self, like like Genghis Khan, like just yeah. complete evil, like, you know, uh, but and so it requires 95 percent of your life to have been spent service to self to move up in density. But service to others is 51 percent. Uh, and so you move up through these densities and levels of consciousness. We're just we just have five, you know. Uh, five senses in this body here so it's a certain level of consciousness that we think is all but really it's just this limb we're looking at this cave uh, out of these little slits and we barely see the universe as it really is but as you move up it's more and more expansive eventually we're in superpositional states where we're where the consciousness of many things at the same time right so yeah but Ra is explaining the science of reincarnation how you reincarnate we reincarnate in multiple planets often if a planet goes completely service to others, which starting to see the Earth it looks like maybe that what might be happening, right? Then all the people service itself inevitably have to reincarnate elsewhere on other planets. That's what happened in Venus. Service to third, self. That doesn't even right. sound right, though. But in a way, service to self, service to others. Uh, in, in Venus, service to others is what graduated. Most planets service, graduate service to others. Right on. Service to self is very, very rare. Uh, they have a percentage in there. They, in the universe, it's like 20% service to other, service to self. Service to others is like 60%, and then there's a mix. We have, we've graduated to higher densities in in the past. It happened. They go through a period every 75,000 years, according to that. <laughs> um, and it's all based on reincarnation. It's, it's, um, in the Law of One, they talk about, uh, it, like Abraham Lincoln at one point, uh, gave up his soul and allowed a walk in, free a walk in during the Civil War to help him maneuver what was going on because it was so important to make that transition uh, for civil rights right. and everything like that. Yes, yeah, so slavery. Right. Like that. another being said, we need well, this is such a critical time. If you allow, well, you know, let let me take over your soul. Essentially, is what they're saying in, in the Law of One. There's a lot of really interesting stories about how these people incarnated and stuff like that and the history of the universe in that doctrine. So I really feel like I know that this is going to sound completely wackadoo, but I really right. feel like that happened to me. Like maybe my third psychedelic experience. Um, 
but then I didn't, I felt like I went on another path. Have you ever read that book? I'm sure you have, uh, Conversations with God by Neil Donald Walsh. Oh yeah, man. Beautiful. The first beautiful one book. is amazing, especially, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. I was listening to podcasts and radio when I was in college, just working two jobs. And I was like, man, I really love this. I love the fact that these people can express themselves and they, they just get to talk to all these cool people. Uh, but I know some stuff like I want to talk about because at that time in my life, literally I would, everything that I was thinking about, I would put an emotion to, I didn't really know what was going on at that time, but I was manifesting yeah. stuff and I started realizing it like for the, you know, everybody realizes this, this for the first time in their life at some point, like, Oh, oh crap. I'm manifesting this stuff, you know? And right. uh, <laughs> that part in that book, I was listening to the audio book and I was in Hastings, which is like a movie store, and I had the pod. Oh, yeah, the, I remember Hastings. Yeah, and I had the the pods in my ear, and he was asking God about why do I need to do this or that, and God told him, he said, he goes, even you right now, even you're the, who, even the person that's listening right now, and then he stopped, and that, he had that powerful voice, you know, and he was like, are you ready? <laughs> are you ready to separate yourself from everybody, ready to be like, yeah." Uh, totally on your own even alone but still spreading the message are you ready to live a life that you never thought you would are you ready to spread wow. the message right and chills were just going up and down my back oh, wow. and i was like yeah i gotta get, i gotta do this podcasting thing like tomorrow i'm pretty sure yeah. that's what i'm supposed to do uh i hear you that i've i've had moments like that where songs were or books that i was listening to were talking directly to me too many where i started to say okay I might be just a little bit insane, <laughs> but I love it when that happens. You know, I really do. It's amazing. Yeah. Cause you wonder like, is this feeding my ego or is this a real message? Right. And you right. know, you know, the difference between <laughs> ego and a message is the message will literally, there'll be a synchro that are, ha it'll happen and it'll be so profound that, you know, right. there's no, you don't question it after that. I think like, cause right. I've had all kinds of stuff. I'm like, what does that mean? What does this mean? Or a rabbit ran out in front of my truck. What's that mean? It all means something. Right. But those profound messages literally like send energy through your body. It's crazy, man. You know? Um, On my episode today, uh, Neville Goddard says everything is symbolic. Every single thing. Yep. That would be hard to imagine. Every single thing that happens is symbolic. Now, I can see symbology in a lot, but um, what if everything... <laughs> That, that would be hard to comprehend. Well, it, I believe that, but you'll start going crazy. Seriously. Right. Like, if you go outside, I, I'll go outside in the yard and I'll see, okay, today's two Blue Jays, a uh, Cardinal, and uh, right. I'm hearing this song on the radio. Then I'll go look up all the meanings of that stuff, and it's exactly what's going on. Like, exactly what's going on. Right. And then I look around, I'm yeah. like, man, you know, my head feels a little clustered today. I'm kind of confused. And I'll look around, and my room's all clustered i'm like um okay you start tripping out on it after a while right you're like what's going right. on here so do i do i advance with the reality like my exterior world to change my interior world or wait and then you kind of realize okay i can do both here right i can yeah. do both and that's what the occultists and everybody is called magic and then you start to understand your emotions that hey i can broadcast a signal too mm -hmm. and, and then what happens? I want to know what happens when you start realizing this, that you're actually responsible for more, way more than you thought in your life. When you came to that moment, what did happened. you do? Exactly. It was a huge shocker. A lot of people go into denial because it, it implies a lot of things because uh, that means a lot of stuff that happened in our lives. We blamed on other people. It was all our, our own fault. And that's hard to take. That's hard to take. Uh, taking responsibility for everything is yeah. some of that stuff. Hey man, that could, that's not my fault. It's happened. And, and then so, so some people don't want to acknowledge that power because it's easier. It, it's easier just to say, Oh, it's all just random stuff that's happening. You know, it's like a divine justice, right? We look back right. on our pain and we go, ah, this happened to me. My dad did this, my mom did that, then my friends did this, then my siblings did that, then my relationships did this, and yet, who are all these really cool people in your life? How did you get here right. to this point? 
it's right. It does make sense after a while, right? Like all of that stuff adds up. You, where would you be if you wouldn't have been through all that? And right now, what? And now every that, everybody is you pushed out exactly, a little yeah. bit. Now yeah. that we're going through this transition and the earth is whatever the hell, I don't honestly don't know what this COVID thing is. I think it could very really be the science doesn't make sense. The medical science doesn't, I don't believe anything they're saying. I don't believe they know what it is, you know, because it, a virus has antibodies and it doesn't even act like a virus. It doesn't act like a bacteria. They don't know what it is. I, I wonder if it's just a weird kind of computer virus type thing that consciousness is like made it's like man we just gotta we gotta clear some stuff out here in order for this new thing to happen now that sounds bad because i know people are passing away and stuff good people are passing away right but either it's either that or there's some really diabolical stuff going on that we just don't see man but those diabolical things are us so that most interesting i had this amazing episode where i was reading from seth the channel being uh, if you've ever heard of Seth, Jane oh, yeah. Roberts, Seth speaks, right? Seth speaks, right? He wrote a, this amazing chapter about pandemics. And so he says that what we all choose when we die. And I, when I interviewed Julie Ryan, the psychic, she's amazing too. She said the same thing. She, she's an expert. She can see when people die. We all choose when we die. So in the past and now, when there is pandemics, they are often associated with major government change or major change, and these souls will choose to die because it, it's they, their death has symbolism, right? So, hey, they, they're struggling already, maybe, and they're saying, if, but my death has meaning because it's it, there's been symbolic political governmental change in the world from this virus, it's making a statement. Now, in the past, like during the Black Plague and what what Seth was saying is that the people, you know, there was such dire poverty in Europe, right, that that a lot of souls would choose to die during that time because it was making a statement about the conditions of the world, right? And as we all accept that we are all each other, it's changing. So there's this kind of a shift. There's old energy that's leaving. It is some level of consciousness going on because ultimately it's so invariable as to who gets sick. Clearly the scientists can see it and like the Nature Magazine article shows that it would have been very, very difficult to create in a lab and a bunch of other articles show that it may be some sort of blood disease, but I think that you've hit it on the nail that there's consciousness related to this virus. I'm not saying that that means that it's a hoax because I, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that aren't don't you see the energetic effects of this virus and the way it's changing the world? The environment's getting cleaner. People are spending more time at home, going within. People are it, there's something happening. There's an awakening happening just purely because of it. Uh, but I don't know. I'm just like you, and I'm an observer. And it looks crazy and weird because of the variability of it. And and yeah, I think that the science is going to be slow on one of, on this for, and they're trying to to catch up and look like they know what they're talking about. But it looks like it's really difficult to research for a microbiologist, a virologist, uh, because of so many things, you know. Yeah, that it is. It is a trip. I think I want to think. I want. I want to. This is what I want to do. I want to get to a point to where you and I, maybe a few other people, and I've said this on the show before, we really, really learn how to do this. And maybe we could have our own, like, I know this sounds wild, but people say it's a brave new world. That kind of brave new world, they're talking about billboards in space and, you know, kind of. uh, uh, Right. That's, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a brave new world where people are astral traveling together and going on trips and coming back and talking about it and really exploring their consciousness in yes. ways that's never been done before. That sounds like a social me. memory complex forming a group mind, right? Yeah. On other multiple levels. We're imagine a world where you have instant healing and teleportation and trans dimensional travel. Um, all of it in, in, in a, as we expand our consciousness, even technologically, we're going to start expanding our consciousness, being able to send thoughts to each other, like yeah. Elon Musk is talking about, right? right? We've always expanded consciously through technology. 
So that's part of the change. We're creating a bridge of incidents as we want to expand our consciousness. And the it's the, there's no limit to the kind of expansion that we can, once we come together with support of a goal, hey, we want to help each other out. And we start having access to the full memory of the earth. And we can start traveling out of body and doing these things. Yeah, join me on my meditation this weekend. I'm, I'm trying to do that. Activate social memory complexes and and link together you know we had the peace meditation last week i think we can we can do it you know we can do it now so uh when we when we do i i love the idea of group meditation stuff like astral travel together sounds freaking fantastic i love that yeah well they did it at the monroe institute for sure like yeah thomas campbell talks about it talks about how they would travel out and through the scientific method confirm that they, they they left their body well we don't really know if we're leaving our bodies but what's really going on there all we know is that they laid down they got into this hemisync method uh they right. seemed to travel out of their body and be local and both saw you know they did experiments where like yeah th they hid stuff i saw this the other person saw it too they saw each other confirmed things and oh yeah like, the remote the travel stuff yeah is so amazing. I just watched a video. Two of those dudes that are experts at the remote travel, um, and they ch they were checking out the moon Iapetus near Saturn, and figured out it's like a spaceship, and they looked at the full history of it, all these weird things that had happened on that moon, right next to to Saturn. Uh, they're, they're, they're with that ability to travel out of your body. They can also go back and forward in time, and they can check out anything. And so this vast world becomes available. Imagine if that just becomes easier and easier for us to do. I think that is going to happen where yeah. we can actually explore past and future uh, and then we'll start to share this stuff and we'll start realizing it's real and then everything's going to change. It's going to be amazing. Here's the trippy thought that I want to discuss maybe as we go into the top of the hour here. Yeah, We're under a power structure of government, all kinds of different things, you know, I'm not a conspiracy guy because I'd, I'd like, I'm all about solutions more than I am, but you have to identify the problems first, which right. is, that's what conspiracy does. And then they identify problems and no matter how crazy all of them seem, they still do manifest some real problems here. So we are right. aware of, we're, we're a big time aware of that now. What if two thoughts, we decide to do this, we learn how to do this. We take that, those methods plus the method that Daskalos and the researchers of truth taught where he could actually get out of his body plus interact with the physical realm too mm -hmm. in certain ways. If yeah. a certain group of people could do that, and I'm yes. talking about a massive group of people, how right. unstoppable would that be? That's what I'm saying. I, I said that on my episode on Saturday. We did a global peace meditation. And I said together, you know, we can do anything. If we can link, and I and I I used in that video, we activated Merkabas. There's an energy link on the back of our head. I've looked at the science of it. There's advanced ways we're learning in consciousness in meditative states to connect beyond just the frilly way of saying, oh, we're all one. But there's actual real ways of awakening your energy no, Let's not centers. talk about it. Let's do it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get what you're saying. And so I, I'm, that, my thing was I wasn't done, I'm tired teaching it and talking about it because I have episodes where I – so I did that meditation and, and we did it. And I had a live meditation on Zoom I did uh, a week ago, and I was meditating with everybody. We did that. We, we, we were, you know, to rain love down, peace, something different though, and – I was in tears. I could feel 8 billion souls wow. for a portion of that meditation. Uh, we were trying to free them. And, and it, I, I, that was not my plan at the beginning of the uh, meditation. Something is happening. And I ask anybody listening to this show right now, you have noticed a change in the way you perceive events. Yep. You see yourself in everybody. When you see yourself in everybody, why did the, you know, is some of these movements you watch on on. TV and politics and news seem ridiculous where everybody is overreacting, but, but there is something behind all that. So everybody would overreact when you start to see yourself and others, because the people that usually overreact are the people that are personally involved in a crisis. Mm. The family loses a daughter and the family's the one in front of the camera saying, this is not okay, right? Well, it seems like everybody's acting like they're personally involved in these incidents that start happening. And 
that's what I see happening all the time. It is they can feel people, it. What, the Me Too movement, right? Uh, why did that pick up and become such a crazy thing, right? Well, well, one woman said her story, somebody else did, and then all of a sudden a bunch of people said, well, I wouldn't want that to happen to me. And it's different than it was 10 or 20 years ago. We have this change in consciousness that we have not openly acknowledged where we are more in touch with each other, like it or not. Yeah, totally. Um, and th- <laughs> th- then here's my second thought as we move into the top of the hour here. That power, what if what if there's already people doing that, but they're not actually have our best interest out? Now, I would there say are. there definitely are, because I would say if you study yeah. any astral travel books, anybody that's done this stuff, remote viewers included, that they have ran into situations where there seems to be people that are here, even in high government, that already know how to do these things. So now... Now they're messing with our consciousness. So what I'm saying is, is it's like, right. It's not time to talk about, like you're saying, it's time to, if you want to do something about it, if you want to fight for your sovereignty and your freedom, it's time to learn how to do consciousness exploration. I'll do a meditation here anytime, group meditation on your show. Anytime I offer anytime and, and and check on Saturdays, every Saturday, that's the first place we got to start is stop talking about it, start meditating and experimenting together. I think that something happens when everybody starts meditating together, it becomes its own thing. Yeah. Uh, and we start realizing advancements in consciousness together. Things pop up or, oh, I learned this new tech. I learned this new technique. And we kind of bring it together. I think that's what starts happening. Like a mastermind forms almost. Right on. Again. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. And it I'm, becomes I'm a big pretty believer powerful. in that. And I think that. That's what's going to happen that we've been talking about when they talk about the new earth and all. That's what's going to happen. A group mind is going to perform and the the service to self and the negative forces that are that have had to be super powerful and highly manipulated because they they have smaller numbers and they basically have a slave class for most of the people under them. But they've known this was coming. They've known this period of time is coming and they know that there's nothing they can do about it. Because Mm -hmm. as people grow in this level of love and understanding, they will manipulate us. They are so good. But we are even realizing the reality of that. As we get in touch with the the Akashic, we're starting to see behind all the manipulations. We see behind when the media says something, we kind of all know what they're trying to say or what the inside story is. Talk to anybody. Everybody always sees behind the scenes on everything. It's not because of what we've seen in the past. It's this new consciousness that's happening, right? It's a slow process. God, if we if we suddenly woke up tomorrow and we remembered everything from everybody, it wouldn't be good, right? It would probably, <laughs> no, it, it probably know, right? wouldn't. <laughs> right. Yeah, we'd be but like, man, doing, what the hell have like we been slow, doing? <laughs> it's a slow, very organic, slow process every single minute, every second, but it is becoming exponential. There is a quickening that's happening. It's a reality revolution. That's what I'm saying, that we're changing. Our reality is changing. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it definitely is. I don't agree with it. I, I know it. it's changing. I don't think things are ever going to be the same again. It all no. depends on your perception, but that's mine. I think we, there's two versions that will happen, and people will. We got to take on. a break here. We'll be right. right back, though. We yeah, can yeah. talk about that. We'll be right back. More Lighting the Void coming up with our guest, Brian Scott. Stay with us. Fringe FM. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You love the new Paranormal Radio app from Talk Stream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app. Free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. Hey, this is No Way Jose, a Northern California Piscean stuck in the Arizona desert. I'm a void walker, and I got the shoes to prove it. So what do I do when my soul yearns to delve deep into the realm of the unknown? 
I aim my satellite straight into the night sky and catch a smooth ride on the KTLK DB radio waves. I tune into Lighting the Void with Joe Root on the French FM. Joe, Lighting the Void is the best show on the planet. This is Barney, your friend from Facebook. Thank you and all the crew for all you do. Namaste, my friend. This is Macon from the Foothills of North Carolina, and I am a board walker. G'day, board walkers. This is Lily from Down Under Australia. The world may be small, but the enigma is great. So let your curiosity take you for a journey with Joe Root. Hey, this is V, coming in from Central Maryland, and I am a void walker. This is Kevin Darkerty, a beginner void walker. I'm from Vancouver, BC. I know a little about a lot, you know, as Leonard Skinner said, I guess the rest. I learned a lot from uh, Mr. Root and the show. And I uh, heard it from the beginning. I knew right then he was going to be a new art bell. Thanks for all your uh, shows and keep it up. Hey, this is Derek from Mass, a.k.a. the Night Stalker, and I'm a void walker. This is Mark from Chicago, and I walk the void to ascertain what is consciousness. My name is Jared Johnson, and I'm from Humboldt County, California. I do not know all the answers to the questions about reality. I do not claim to know the ultimate truth about life. I seek that which has been made hidden as a part of a family of explorers of consciousness. I'm a void walker. Thanks, Jaru. I'm Clyde Lewis. You are listening to The Fringe FM. Is that a new music app? Yeah, check it out. Surfer Music Discovery. It links to thousands of online stations, but the twist is you see the song names and artists that are now playing live. That's different. No guessing. Looks like a waterfall of music. So many formats. Rock, oldies, country, R&B, jazz, and a whole lot more. How's that spelled? Surfer. S-U-R-F-R. Is it expensive? It's free. No need to sign up or sign in. Get the Surfer Music app free from Google Play or the App Store. Have you ever seen an ad or banner which brought you a feeling that someone is reading your mind or even listening to your conversations? Your online data is being used against you. Surfshark is a VPN service that makes online privacy protection easy and attainable. You can use it on as many devices as you'd like simultaneously. Surfshark encrypts all internet traffic sent to and from your devices and ensures that your IP address remains hidden. The VPN service that we use at UFO Seekers plus one month free for $1.99 a month. Visit surfshark.deals slash seekers. We all have that story to tell in our lives. The winds were howling. The ground shook. You could hear rushing water. And then history repeats itself. When there's no power, refrigeration fails. Stores with their shelves strip bare. ATMs can't operate. Deliveries stop. Then what? These events can last days or weeks. You need a plan. In statements made during recent interviews, FEMA Administrator Brock Long has repeatedly urged all Americans to understand three truths. FEMA is broke. The system is broken. If this is the new normal, Americans can't rely on federal cavalry when disaster strikes. Don't get caught out in the elements empty-handed. Prepare with us by going to preparewiththefriends.com and get your two-week food supply, 92 servings, eight food varieties with 25-year shelf life, normally $137, now only $75. Or get a month's supply, normally $247, now only $147 shipped in one business day. Just go to preparewiththefriends.com or call 888-440-7931. That's 888-440-7931. Get this great offer and be prepared while it lasts. Hey, Fringe listeners, this is Dave Cruz, host of Beyond the Strange Radio, asking you to join us live Sunday evenings at 7 p.m. Pacific Time, 10 p.m. Eastern, right here on The Fringe FM. Visit beyondthestrange.com for links to chat, social media, and schedules of the show. And remember, always stay strange. Asta. Pair Abnormal News, I'm Brad Bernards. They may not be little green men. They may not arrive in a vast spaceship. There could be more than 30 intelligent civilizations in our galaxy today capable of communicating with others, according to reporting in The Guardian. The main calculation involves knowing how many stars in our galaxy could be old enough to host life. And we know how life formed on on Earth and our own solar system. We know how long it took. We know what kind of metallicity, that is the kind of metals we have. And if you look at what other stars in our galaxy has those properties, you're able to come up with this number 
which the uh, average is 36 for the number of possible planets that could host intelligent communicating civilizations. Christopher Consolas, professor of astrophysics at the University of Nottingham. That's courtesy Euro News. Experts say the work not only offers insights into the chances of life beyond Earth, but could shed light on our own future and place in the cosmos. Ghost ships appear to be sailing in large circles off the coast of San Francisco, giving off GPS signals without the boats actually being anywhere near the area. Nine ships were identified, all of which seem to be moving in circular tracks in the waters off Point Reyes, just north of San Francisco, and some tracks even showed the ships crossing onto dry land. Strangely, none of the ships emitting signals from the area were anywhere close to California, a likely explanation, according to Todd Humphreys, an associate professor of aerospace engineering and engineering mechanics at the University of Texas at Austin, is that the ships are using GPS spoofing devices to trick the AIS system and mask their real location. Connect with the news at ParaAbnormalRadio.com. I'm Brad Bernards, ParaAbnormal News. Somewhere between abnormal and paranormal, there's a show called Into the Paranormal. I'm Jeremy Scott. Hear me live Saturdays at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern on the Fringe FM. Welcome back to Lighting the Void. We are broadcasting from uh, all the way from central, south central Arkansas. And it's hot and humid. The night is sultry, but we're having a good conversation here with Brian Scott. Reality Revolution. This is a good book. You should get it. And his YouTube channel is full of treasures, man. Your YouTube channel is full of treasures. And I I can get lost in YouTube sometimes, but if, if I do, I like to get lost in... Things like what, just things that inspire me, just profound, revealing type of information about who we are. And that's all on your YouTube channel, man. I commend you for that. It probably took a lot of hard work, too, to get there. Oh, thanks, man. It's just fun. I have a blast doing it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I've thought about getting into a video myself, but uh, right now the internet uh, is on chicken wire and you know if somebody thumps it i can't really upload anything so and i love radio yeah speaking of which we were talking earlier about broadcasting signals this is the, one of the biggest things that i learned from joe dispenza because you brought joe dispenza up where you know first you have the thought then you have the emotion and at that point you are broadcasting a signal of a vibration that is creating something into your reality and i don't think mm-hmm. that people as much as we talk about this, that people are aware of that, they, it's almost like the subconscious goes, no, I, I don't want that because that's too much responsibility. I don't have anybody to blame after that for the things that happened to me. And that's, it, that's what, it's like right. the devil on your shoulder and the angel on the right, you know, which one do you mm-hmm. listen to kind of thing. Right. It's, um, but it's all our responsibility. I even believe if I'm in the back seat of an Uber and it has an accident, it's my fault. Uh, that that kind of ra- radical responsibility is what really? I believe. Yeah. You don't leave any of it up to the driver. I don't leave all? any, and it may not be my fault. But the added, but this belief system, just having it, even when it's distorted in situations like that, is amazing. It changes everything. It amplifies my power to create my reality. I'm doing that fully aware of the possibility that I'm wrong, but I do embrace that. Here's and I've talked about it on my channel, like there's a lot of stuff that says, uh, why do accidents happen? Of course, we didn't imagine that accident yeah. happening, right? Why did this happen to me? We've all asked that question. And, you know, Dr. Joseph Murphy says, when you're not thinking about your future, just by not thinking about it, you're letting the group mind think for you. And the group mind expects accidents and death and all kinds of weird things, right? So that's just, you're just letting the the, the primal group mind that tells you, oh, you're going to be in a car accident or, or airplane accident. Uh, and I, I, I think that that's the proactive, constant um, imagining your future in the proper way will avoid 
all that stuff. And that's why I do take responsibility because I let the group mind kind of create my reality in that situation. Not in a bad way. We've talked about the group mind before. That's an active conscious group mind. The other is just the random chaos of the group mind, right? Yeah, that is a trip. If that it, So if we have that kind of power, it doesn't seem real because of the interaction between people. But I often wonder, right. like when you fall asleep, your body is recharging. Even somebody can mm-hmm. watch you sleep. But if there really is a multiverse... Are you waking up in the same world the next day? I wonder It's a about real that. question. Uh, Vadim Zeeland in that book, Transferring, tries to answer that question and, and, and actually proposes the idea that when people disappear, it's possible they woke up in some other reality from their dream, right? Um, and a million proposed, people go missing right now, right. according to Mr. Maybe it's just they just disappeared in their dream. But when you're in a dream, your soul is most likely explore has does in many dreams, not all, but uh, is exploring all the different possible realities in your past and future. Uh, that's why we get tired. Our soul can't wait. It's like a vast Disneyland universe for our soul. Yeah. They go and they can explore, explore all the different various timelines that we did live or never lived. A lot of times we have no idea what we're seeing. It's because the soul is just playing around. It wants to go and, and explore all these different sectors in in the quantum field the brain um speaking of which the brain we don't want to count that out even though the brain isn't really consciousness but the brain does play a role uh scientifically um there's an article on the website where the about a that we put up today about a rare case study where a man cannot see numbers through his brain process so if you imagine your perception took away your ability to see numbers like the rest of the world. Right. So that's what happened to this patient um, the, for privacy. His initials is RFS. There's an article on live science researchers and doctors discuss this curious case where this guy was unable to see numbers from two to nine, but he retained the ability to see ones and zeros. And it's a super rare scenario that leads to like, what is perception? You know, um, what's going on there so the guy started having like headaches and uh his speech would mess up and his vision and memory would mess up he had tremors muscle spasms and then things would worsen where like the number eight would turn sideways and if you think about that haven't you ever haven't you ever had dreams where when you look at numbers they do that weird stuff you know i probably have yeah you know how like that's amazing think about it that there's we can have something programmed into our consciousness that we don't see things. Like uh, imagine if in our consciousness is programmed, we don't see ghosts. They're all around all the time. We just don't see them, right? Uh, That's telling us that we can be programmed not to see something. I I conducted a hypnosis once where somebody could see through somebody else and read something through somebody else where they, um, please read the piece of paper behind somebody and they could look while they're in that hypnotic state. um, this yeah, is the, the brain. <laughs> this makes amazing. you think about a lot. It makes me think about a lot. Um, mm-hmm. I post the article there in the chat that, room. I don't think the brain actually holds memory. I think that's a misconception. Uh, the more we understand consciousness, the brain is essentially identifying a web address. Like we go to a link when we go to a web page, but the web page pulls up with all the stuff on it, right? All that stuff that pulls up is in the quantum field that we're accessing of consciousness which changes your understanding. People think all their memories are locked in that brain, but it's not true. We, people have removed portions of different parts of the brain. And the truth is we have access to these memories because they're links to portions in consciousness. Hmm. That's a trip, man. Okay. So that case study does kind of show like, what are we really aware of? We think we're aware of a lot. But what are we really aware of when it comes to perception? Like how can all of our brains be sending what's what looks like on the level identical signals, but our perceptions be so different? How does that process maybe? So for instance, when I, when I talk, you'll understand this, but I confuse so many people when I ask this question, I'm like, okay, when we're kids, we're taught that this color's red, this color's blue, this color's yellow, et cetera, et cetera. But what is color? Color is just a reflection of light and molecules that reflect a certain color. So if two brains are getting identical signals, we could actually be seeing different colors, 
but we'll never know it because we've been defining those that molecular structure the whole way right yeah so you may look at the grass and it may actually be what my blue is and but you're calling it green you see what i'm saying we'll never know you'll never know well somebody that's colorblind but sees colors all the time i i get that you know i'm supposed to be red green colorblind but i think i can identify green you know yeah Uh, but but what does your green look like exactly everybody's green different right yeah what are we seeing are we seeing the same things we don't know that we don't we just don't know and we can't verbalize it it's only experience and that's it so it is pretty trippy and there's some esoteric books I believe one of them was channeled too, like the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, where he says all eyes and minds do not see the same thing, yet they call it the yes. same thing. Mm. Those are amazing. I could talk about those forever. Thoth is amazing. <laughs> That's a trip because you're thinking, hmm, well, if I look at a person and say, well, you're beautiful, and they say, well, you're handsome, and then you go, well, what is beautiful and handsome? It, I get twisted thinking about this stuff, man, too much. You ever do that? You start to like you get cross-eyed after a while. Uh, but the yeah, best thing to absolutely. do is meditate at that point. <laughs> I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's your thoughts on I mean, trance, though? Trance meditation. Uh, well, uh, there's a certain group of people that can be put into trance, and there's a certain group of people that can't. And there's a bunch of people that can go in and out of trance. We're, we're put into trance states at a younger age, watching TV and different things. So we're actually a little bit in a constant trance state all the time. Uh, but there are certain levels to it. And some people respond amazingly. Uh, it's uh, I've seen all different versions of it, and it's pretty interesting. Uh, but I do think there's some power. And if people can induce that trance state, they can make huge changes in and programming in their mind and their consciousness and uh, some people just can't pull off the trance they're they're such uh, on such a certain level they, they they're not induced in uh, a certain percentage of people yeah because the i got to thinking about that thinking about the brain and hemisync when you listen to robert monroe's like his first sessions um he's syncing both sides of the brain so there the one time i did have that real local out-of-body experience the brain was involved but from what we understand scientifically but there was a part in that session where he was talking about uh color breathing and you would inhale right and you would exhale but when you exhaled you would just like uh, like make a noise like just where you're totally relaxing when you exhale but then Mm -hmm. it's the wickedest sound because you're listening to a bunch of people do it at once and it sounds like a almost like a horror flick or if you walked into <laughs> if you walked into a room full of uh people chanting or doing something just crazy but it starts to resonate right and then the next thing you know you start vibrating i'm like what in the hell is going on here how how come i can't just do that laying down why do i need to get into a certain state so you've probably figured that stuff out though man you got this stuff down way more than i do well, like we talked about last time, uh, I'm a big fan of neurolinguistic programming, and that really taught me how to induce trance, and they've learned how to induce trance states without people knowing it. That's the amazing thing about neurolinguistic programming. And you I that? see it in advertising all the time, uh, <clears throat> but I think people are becoming desensitized a little more than they were in the past, and more aware of their own consciousness that it's not as much as it was in the past like the jedi mind trick like these are not the droids you're looking for and now yeah these are not the droids i'm looking for that's kind of what it is right but right yeah it's subliminal and absolutely they, they have got this down like the advertising industry you're right they understand our subconscious they understand what colors trigger what what words trigger things what is that word that makes you feel like you have to buy this thing or you need it that triggers their emotions isn't that trippy right yeah no they 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 use anchoring which is very powerful tying certain emotions to words and then reusing them later uh or words or colors or sinks it's the level that they use it on it's so elaborate right when i see it and understand it it's amazing uh 
but like I said, as we become more conscious, we are certainly becoming aware of much, much more. Oh, there's my the cat. kitty. Now cool. about, yeah, that's right. So I, I Here, think... Hold on one second. No, it's cool. We can put the cat on the mic if you want. No, no. Okay, well, we'll just let him meow. So. Yeah, it's <laughs> cool. I put my cat in here sometimes, too. I'm not worried about it. Um, right. So here's the thing. Once you realize how neuralistic programming works, anchoring, things like that, which is something everybody should right. study, you can tell when someone's being genuine with you. Yes. Or when someone's really trying to manipulate you emotionally, f- mentally, psychologically. You don't have to respond to them. You can just observe it and go, okay, I know what's happening here. But if you don't right. know these things, then you're the victim of it. It's empowering to learn this stuff. Um, it is. It's important. I think that everybody should learn the techniques that are being used. Women that are dating should know the techniques that guys are trying to absolutely. use. Absolutely. Uh, that d- it would be a mistake for you to date in this world now when there are dudes that are paying thousands of dollars to take classes on exact techniques of words to say. Uh, you know, these are important things for anybody. I'm going to do and a whole show you- on that, man. Actually, yeah. I've got a whole show prepared for. Uh, and it's not just dudes, it's women too, where they learn right. and study ways of how to psychologically and emotionally manipulate you things. It, I'm telling you, there's no love involved. It's, it's right. all about attraction, just attraction, not love. And it's a hunt. It's a it, hunt. It's, it's kind terrible. of like a winning the prize. Yeah. Uh, one of the most interesting books was, uh, Neil Strauss's The Game, Penetrating the Secret Society of Pickup Artists. Yeah. If you've, have, yep. <laughs> have you read that book? Yep. Uh, so behind the scenes, these, these guys are treating dating like a science experiment and coming home and literally coming up with advanced scripts with theoretical basis. It's pretty insane. So I even mentioned that in my book that every woman should know about that, not because it's good, because I'm not saying it is. Even Neil Strauss says it wasn't. No, it's not. Uh, but it's uh, because it's it's treating the woman like an object in many ways, or a strategy, which devalues them as a person. But it's being used. So the best thing that you can do is understand how it's being used. Yeah. Some of that stuff we kind of use anyway in normal conversation, just because we are cheesy like that. You know, there's mm. part of that. So, but you can tell when it's obvious. Yeah, like I give you an example, uh, what, just a quick example, because I learned this stuff too, and I did use it as a science experiment, but not to pick up, not to do any pickup, just because I didn't believe it was real. I was like, is this real? You know? Uh, right. And it is totally real. And it's like, why is this? It really, man, I got to tell you, that was one of the darkest times of my life too. Uh, and one of the reasons why I just didn't date for like years because I saw this stuff happening after I, you know, saw that this Mm -hmm. stuff was, it really was like the most disheartening thing to me, but it is disheartening. It really is, uh, that women respond to it. It's disheartening that, uh, I think sometimes women knowingly are responding to it, knowing they're being manipulated and that's what they're looking for um, Mm. on some level. Right. Yeah. It's all, it's all about understanding what it's really all about is understanding like w- sacred energies that shouldn't be being played with number one, cause you should be authentic. Right. But right. Masculine and feminine energy. Right. So th- these mm-hmm. gurus understand that women are more comfortable and safe and they're feminine and that you make them feel safe, but you also kind of stay a mystery and then you tease them, but you don't like, you know, you don't over pursue and you let them do 80%. And then as long as it's a scientific fact, which is the sad part when it comes to attraction that if a woman, and this is just like 90%, this is based on studies. Y'all don't get mad at me, but if a woman right. doesn't know how you feel, they become more attracted to you. Right. Right. That's a scientific well, that, that, fact that's been experimented, messed with that dudes use to manipulate women. Well, one of the saddest parts of that book is the whole idea of, uh, the guys that will like, politely insult a woman uh, because that gets them to suddenly show interest in trying to prove that person they wrong. earn approval, yep. Treating, a, so insulting a woman is one of the techniques, which it saddens me, you know what I mean? Because of, uh, of the manipulation of that. So, so when you say, yeah. when you, when you, instead of embracing the sacred energies 
and just being like, hey, I got both of these energies in me, but I'm a man, so I'll just be authentic and just let whatever happen happen, right? Mm-hmm. And that's the hard thing. Right. When you totally become yourself, that's you're not going to attract a whole bunch of people, I'm sorry to say, but you're going to attract the right person, you know? Exactly. You're not, it's, you're going to attract the person that vibrates on your level. Uh, once you go to that level of consciousness, the people that you meet are in that level. And so it might not be as many because there aren't as many at that level, but they're, they're cooler. They're better. It's all around. That's exactly what happens, right? Yeah. The no contact rule, how to get your ex back, all this other emotionally, you know what I call it? I call it emotional terrorism. That's what I call it. Right. I'm serious. Like this stuff scars people, screws them it up, does. implant it damages people. It's the worst. It's the worst. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you could just be yourself, try not to manipulate, please, for the love of God, try not to manipulate other people to get them to like you. Just be yourself. And if they don't like you, move the hell on until somebody does. Somebody will. I promise you. Eventually. Well, this is a universal truth. Everything is a mirror, right? So if you go about trying to manipulate people to find love or whatever it is, you will be manipulated. Do you want to be manipulated? It's a guarantee, no matter what happens, if you start going on that path of of being the manipulator, then you have to embrace the fact that you will get manipulated. And it's usually pretty nasty. Go and look at people that do that. They end up being manipulated with some other thing. Maybe it's a business deal or a house or something like that because everything is a mirror. Flystick said, I had the flu, told my wife that I was sick. She doesn't care and then got the flu. Yeah, that's a mirror right there. Right, exactly. (laughs) That's an exact example. Oftentimes we'll make an excuse or say something, but we can't become that thing. It's, It's so much the truth. Yeah, so I kind of so, like understood this uh, uh, from a way like in in my first marriage. Uh, well, there were some things that happened. We were young; things happened. You don't know all this stuff, and I wanted to right. understand why did this happen? Why, how did this happen? And right. I could see it after I learned this stuff psychologically. I, I seen it happen, and I'm like, you know what? That's that's really sad. It's really freaking sad because there was uh, there was real. There was something real there at once, you know, but it got screwed up because somebody knew how to manipulate better. And right. I'm, I'm telling you, man, what you're talking about right now, and I did not prime you for this, by the way, but what you're, you yeah. just brought it up, but this happens on the show all the time, but, um, the synchronicities, I'm telling you, man, that was the, one of the darkest times in my life was yeah. when I realized about that, honestly. Yeah, I get that. And it, it is dark uh, on the same level. When I was dating, I uh, at one point, because I was busy with my business, I got a virtual dating assistant, which is not on the – I wasn't manipulating, right? But uh, they, they would uh, contact the girl. They would say the jokes that I would say, and they would have the basic responses. And then they would send me the thing, and it would say, okay, well, you can have – you can meet – the girl for coffee at this place. Here's the conversation that you had. Oh my <laughs> <Right>? God. <laughs> what the right? hell? What, and then when I would show up, I'd have the conversation. I'd know like, you know, but then I, cause what I found was it was like super time consuming going and updating your profile on match and checking out the messages at the different ones and kind of annoying, like sweep, swiping right all the time. So but then it like, you know, am I on the same level, right? <laughs> Is it the same thing? So, yeah, it never would work out, right? Because there's not that initial spark that was real. Yep. And I tried and it too. Like I tried the real. Exactly. And I tried right? the dating thing, like the plenty of fish stuff just a few times. And then right. once you got past somebody that was actually being genuine about their profile, then right. I'd sit across from them and just start chatting because I'm looking for a real connection here. I'm not looking for manipulation or you trying to get what you want and all this other stuff. And sure enough, it would start happening. I'd see it to like, they'd play this texting game or this game back and forth or a uh, right. ghost. And I'm like, you know what? You're just going to push me away doing that crap. Like I don't feel, it doesn't feel right. You know, I think yeah, yeah. for me, it was an instantaneous never talking to you again. Uh, so I had a bunch of that because I identify because I knew about it. Right. So as soon as that game was played, and so, yeah, you go through a lot. It's tough, you know what I mean? And the dating world, it could be both a benefit. I talk about it in my book. 
Mm -hmm. It can be both a wonderful time because we do connect to people that we would normally have never connected with yeah. now with, with these apps. That's the bright side of it. But there's like a dark side to it, too. Like we all think that uh, that somebody better is just around the corner. That's the thing that's really that's this tragic about it is um, you'll meet people. But they because there's so many options available, so many people out there that they can date. Right. That they'll date, but it's never, it's always a lukewarm, but somebody might be just a little better right around the corner, right? Yeah. Or or people are ordering up their dates, like going to McDonald's, you know? It's not. <laughs> yeah. You know? But I think, I think that I watched this video about Teal Swan. It was a long time ago because I was talking about enlightenment. What is enlightenment, you know? And she said, you know what spiritual enlightenment is? It's when you become authentic and you don't really know. Uh, who you really are because you're constantly growing, but you're becoming authentic to learn, to be more authentic, to grow. Right. Um, and th at that yeah. point, that's what spiritual, spiritual, uh, excuse me, spiritual enlightenment's all about. And I'm thinking, Hmm, but that's a lonely road, right? Cause you can't control things anymore. You just be who you are and you vibrate that. And eventually these people will come into your life. Even if it's not relationship, friends, doesn't matter. Uh, people will start coming around. That's your tribe. And that's to God, my God's honest truth. Not only was it about astral travel, but lighting the void. That's why I named the show because I felt a void in myself after I learned all of how people were being manipulated, how people yeah. were being treated. And not only that, even after I learned about that stuff, I still got master manipulated by some of the best, you know, right. but still, well, Hey brother, my sixth episode on this, uh, was called into the void. I talk about it. Uh, I have a meditation called Into the Void. Uh, and it was all about in creating, you know, finding the void in the meditative state and lighting the void. You know what I mean? I even called myself the void maker, I think, in that particular one. <laughs> right on. So, yeah. right. I hear you, man. Um, so it took, so the first year of doing the show, Brian, it was like maybe yeah. 20, 30 people were listening. I was like, I just got to keep talking. I'm just going to keep talking, just right. saying what I feel and think, not really caring too much about what's happening just be myself and slowly but surely a family and a group of people came around here and most of them are here now right, right. so it's like some of them still come and go that happens but i think a lot of us are starting to realize that now i think that's what this uh, big change is too is like man why do i why am i trying to do this stuff why am i being controlled why am i trying to control why can't i i just need to be me yeah. and then that is my bliss, man. You know who I am, that right. childlike nature. Absolutely. See, we, we just broke the internet. We solved everything. We don't have to do a show. Anymore. We did. <laughs> That's right, man. They just, they had to dial it right here. No, I, I hear you that 100%. Uh, we are moving to some other level of understanding. Uh, clearly, no matter what you believe based on the events that have occurred or something else. Yeah. So, so so once we get to that point, I think we can really under, then we can really understand what these energies are about, what this consciousness thing is about, how people coming in and out of our lives and be okay with it. Like you were talking about earlier, just right. kind of trust that, trust it and see what happens. That's, um, that's how I met Dan. That's how I met Ryan. That's how I met Dave. Uh, a lot of the people in the chat. Uh, I got a whole freaking studio here that pr pretty much got built by following that. Like, I, I don't, I don't know, man, yeah. you, you know, <laughs> like it's too it's obvious amazing, to me man. now that just to be authentic is what we need to do. Actually, there's a, we, once we find out who we truly are, we're not basing it on what some pendulum or outside group or something else, but we find out for what we are. Uh, it's it's magic. It's the ultimate magic. It's really it's very it's a superpower, and not everybody finds it. But when they do, man, it's it's amazing. Uh, what do you mean it's by really pendulum? One of the, uh, yeah, I was. I think we were talking about it a little bit on the break. But in, yeah. in trans surfing, they refer to this concept. And once I describe it, you're going to start seeing it in everything. I have an episode on, the, on my thing. Everything you ever wanted to know about pendulums, but we're afraid to ask. But uh, Zealand proposes this idea when 
when we talk about law of attraction, right, we say our thoughts create reality. Well, then game plan that out. What, what does that really mean? If, if you start gaming planning that out on a larger scale and looking at groups of people creating realities at the same time, then what ultimately is happening most often is there's a pendulum that forms, which is an energetic entity where everybody is thinking the same thoughts. And ultimately, the pendulum becomes can its own living thing. Now, on some level, they might the pendulum itself might be conscious, right? We see the perfect example of the pendulum is in politics in the United States, right? You got the Republicans and the Democrats, and they're they're these pendulums. They're almost an individual energetic entity, and the more people think, even if you're responding against it, according to Zealand. You're uh-huh. contributing energy to the pendulum. So if you're fighting it or if you're for it, either way, you're giving your own personal energy to it. And the pendulum only wants your energy. It's just a natural function in nature. It's constantly dragging energy, right? So, And pendulums will kill you. We've had pendulums that have caused world wars. But a pendulum can be two or three people. And it starts to become something else. And the pendulum, you might create the pendulum, but then it gets a mind of its own. You see it in corporations and groups and families and everywhere, right? There's kind of a group consciousness. So uh, once you see the, the start of it, you, can, you can't go insane because you'll see a pendulum in everything. But yeah. uh, you can kind of use that energy and then be aware of when you're giving your energy to it, right? Uh, yeah. A lot of people just get pulled into realities because they think that's what the pendulum wants, right? And it's just this lifeless thing just sucking their energy. Wow. Yeah. I never thought about it like that. You know, I never thought about it like that because I had this uh, tarot reader from, uh, it's like upstate New York that was telling me, said, you know, uh, you can see like when you meet people, Joe, she said, when you see people, you know, they present one thing to you, but you really know what their agenda is and you get upset because you just want them to say the agenda. But it's like, you have to, she was saying, you have to understand that everybody is at a different level of awareness there are people that are way more at a different level of awareness of themselves than i am and people that are and it's not like a uh like i've seen somebody in the chat room say something about that but it's not like about i'm better than you no every, we're all on the same plane here man we're all in the mm-hmm. same field it's just some people are aware of their self more and others and some people are still grow everybody's it's like children everybody's growing at different rates but we're all on the same thing. And as she was saying, you have to learn how to let, let, you know, let people talk to you a certain way while seeing their agenda behind it and speak positively and softly to their agenda instead of getting upset. Cause I would just get upset, bro. I just be like, right. just stop beating around the bush and tell me what you want. You know? Right. <laughs> and, and, and it's like, she would say, just That's speak how I am softly to their agenda. Call, like, Somebody gives you that that sales call and okay, I'll, I'll let them go. And they start selling me like a new vac- vacation or something. I'm just like you, you know. Okay, get to the point. I, I know you don't need to say all that, right? <laughs> Stop trying to sell me. What? what tell yeah, me yeah. the facts, right? Yeah, <laughs> right. The same way. But uh, it was the most profound thing I ever heard. But it's because like, okay, then if I start doing that, then people will warm up to me more. Things, more things will get done. People will be happier. Not only that, I'll be able to recognize when I'm doing that with somebody else too. More than just because you, uh, here's the thing. This is, this is something that I, that used to hurt me, but I realized that some people actually do f- because they're living in their own bodies and they're seeing out like, what did you call them? Like two little slits, right? All the time. Look, looking out of a cave, you know, we barely see what's actually happening out there, right? Yeah. At, in some way, they're in the tower, and everybody else is down here. It could be intellectually, right. it could be spiritually, but they're constantly looking down from their tower at everybody else, and that is the wrong mentality. I even got a thing here in my chat yeah. room called the Dark Tower. I was being sarcastic about it, right? But we we're we're the same, man. Doesn't matter what level. We're all the same. It's right. it's the connections that matter. I think. Like our very, connection, very we're on the same page, man, you and I. Right, absolutely. And we've never met, right? Nope, once, <laughs> once. Just, just once, right? Yeah, totally on the same page. And you brought something up earlier about the Merkaba, and this is something that I've really been looking into because 
what is your what are your thoughts on this thing is this what people see when they see ufos are they seeing like beings yes. in their merkabas i thought that Let's too. Talk, i can talk about this for a long time so just buckle up man because right. i have a merkaba com, um, meditation coming uh in two weeks this weekend i will do a merkaba activation uh I, i've been studying it for a long time and it's truly one of the most and going out beyond that is spinning the sri yantra but the the merkaba is two interlocking pyramids essentially uh, <clears throat> uh one apex pointing upward and downward if we were to look at us uh you you might actually see these energies but most likely not because the um what what we don't understand when we think about it is it's not a still frame it's actually spinning but we haven't really used the merkaba for thirteen thousand years we used it in our pre you know pre-biblical times uh, and advanced beings use the Merkaba. It seems like a weird thing, but it is a way to to enhance your energy and travel. And once you, uh, if you read about Dronvalo Melchizedek, is probably the best teacher of the Mer Merkaba. And what he did is explain how to activate it through 18 breaths, where you bring in your prana and extend it outward, and then begin to spin the Mer Merkaba identifying the female and male energies so you right spin on. the male version going left and the female version going right and then there's a neutral one and when you do this and you actually connect you clean all the circuits out as you breathe uh, you can do it in about four minutes and 50 seconds uh, when you first learn how to do this uh, it is you can feel it you can feel it in your body because when we talk about the kundalini and the energy going up your body People always think of it as a flowing straight upward, even when they're told, but it's a coiling upward. And oftentimes that happens when the Merkaba kind of enters uh, a Fibonacci sequence where the top is spinning 34 times and the bottom is spinning 20 times and it starts to swirl upward in pine cone fashion. And uh, once you get your Merkaba to nine tenths the speed of light, everything around you is basically that Merkaba. So you're, it is you. You are wow. in complete control of that area around you. The thing is that when we look at like the sombrero galaxy, right? Uh, or the heat envelope of that galaxy is what a Merkaba actually looks like. There's a portion where the spinning of the Merkaba happens and the cells in the, the lower part of your body sort of that you can't see, very primitive all the way from the beginning of the, the very tiny um, spread out as the spinning like a centrifuge. Uh, spread out so you kind of look like a galaxy it goes out about 55 feet and so the form of a galaxy is just a living being the most galaxies will have that spin rate where the top is spinning at a different rate as the bottom uh you know in the law of one they talk about how galaxies and suns are all living beings but the galaxy is just a living being inside a merkaba people say that uh, there's 83,000 pyramids on the earth where they, they were trying to create some sort of Merkaba using all of the grid of pyramids on the planet. And some people argue that that early in third, it, there was a devastating mistake where they messed up making the Merkaba. And that's why you have stuff with the Bermuda Triangle. Uh, but there is a point in the 18th breath of the Merkaba where you can you can spin it faster than the speed of light. I think that's when we start traveling into other realities. It's a connection to the higher self, but it, I think that it's the link to everything now, as I've been doing it, and I've been starting to get information coming in, I've been basically told, okay, well, the next step is the Sri Yantra is spinning even farther out beyond you. And so there's this whole vast network of so sacred geometries that you are spinning and, and that blows That's my insane, mind, man. You're, bla yeah. you're they're spinning. So we're in, sometimes we have interacting fields. Uh, the thing that we did in that meditation that is there, there's this energy cord that uh, that you can find on the back of your head. Uh, that the Toltecs uh, talk about Carlos Castaneda. There's the assemblage point that's behind your back, where all you're not in one reality. You're in multiple realities at the same time. They're all kind of your memories, right? And they all imagine they're all strings going to some point in your back. And you can use that amplifying your energy enough using the Merkaba to travel into parallel realities and to consciously connect to the Akashic record. The Merkaba is this game changer uh, as I've used it. Um, when you read Jerome Balo Melchizedek's book, 
the ancient secret of the flower of life. He is, it's basically one of his conferences that he gave. There's a point during the conference where black helicopters are showing up because they're, something's going on there that he's teaching this what? and he, and he creates an uh, artificial Merkaba around the, the, the auditorium where he's teaching. And then the black helicopters disappear as if they couldn't see him. And at, later on in this conference, they go somewhere and the black helicopters show up. He had forgotten um, but you can create a Merkaba for your house or for different things. And yeah, there's something yeah. to it that's on a physics level. If you think about the three points and the and the actual circulation of it, the spinning portion of it, and that there would be key points of energy based on the spinning, then you start to understand what we thought we understood about the energy body and what all of it means, right? Uh, exactly. The weird thing about that book is that he says – that and, and also in the law of one, they say that in Venus, when they moved to the higher density, there was this, it was a result of a sexual energy exchange of some kind between couples. Uh. And he's saying, like, if you while you're in orgasm, when you you do create the onk and you stop at your throat and you let it go around your head. Um, and by doing this, you start to create these fields around you. Yeah. And then you start using these fields and spinning them right on. All right, it's I know awesome. that sounds insane. No, don't don't stop, man. It doesn't <laughs> sound insane. This is all, all right. and this is every look. This is everything you're speaking about is everything I've studied when it comes from magic, the Golden right. Dawn, the Merkaba, the right. uh, sexual Why alchemy, do we see that symbol Egypt, so all of it. often. Why do we see the six pointed star, the Israeli flag? Why do we see that Merkaba symbol so often, never having understood it? And what, what does it really mean when somebody says, because it always seems kind of ridiculous when people, oh, it's the sacred geometries. That always kind of sounded kind of like somebody didn't really understand what that meant. I honestly still don't. Just just the concept of this is so mind bending. Well, uh, <laughs> you want to talk about the Golden Dawn really quick? So people... I, I can talk about it all day. I wrote a book I never published about Aleister Crowley. Really? And I... Yeah, and I studied uh, the Golden Dawn, um, f and I, you know, got their book, of course, the big one. But well, I know about think the, the Golden Dawn is like the 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 uh, beginnings of ceremonial magic, but it's a it is a process of understanding the of balancing first your elemental energies, and you do the pentagram rituals, right? This is right. This is balancing the microcosmic body to get ready for the Merkaba, right? Well, the you, amazing thing in the law of one that they had to conduct a ceremony before contacting Ra. Yeah. What did they do? LBRP, man. Yep. They did the lesser banishing ritual. That's what Ra wanted them to do. That eliminated, there was negative entities attacking them during the whole channeling. So it's not just in there. Uh, and my active use of that, which, which of course, the first time my girlfriend heard me, okay, well, what's that? <laughs> you know, when you're doing it. Yeah. Uh, but it's actually pretty amazing. Uh, you notice it. There is something that's going on. I mean, Damien Eccles says it's just ourselves. We're connecting to a version of ourselves that we're, we're either bringing down or or putting up, right? But Yeah, you talk about a guy that changes to his perception, sitting on death row in a cage and realized it was his yeah. own wizard tower and then got out. Damien Eccles is my hero. Yeah. And anytime you're having a hard time, just say, I could be da Damien Eccles, got out of death row using magic pretty much. If you much, feel trapped, you know? read that book. You won't be read trapped anymore. All of books, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah so so book. you do the the pentagram, you like you balance the the microcosmic body and then they start teaching you, okay, here's some grounding exercises, the middle pillar, so you're constantly balancing right. your energy out. Okay, well now here's the lesser banishing ritual, the hexagram and you're like, "Well, that's a Wait, that's a six-pointed star with the planetary energies around it." And then you right. say, oh, this is the male and female energy and the planets are on the corners and stuff. Like, what's going on here? And then, okay, now, th then they say, okay, like, okay, the tree of life is actually not a two-dimensional shape. It's a three-dimensional shape. And you're like, wait, there's a Merkaba in the middle of this thing at the top. And then you right. get into the <laughs> you get into the inner orders and they go, okay, put all your magic tools down. Now we're going to start meditating and we're just going to start traveling and we're going to work with this energy, you know. Yeah. As they, But they also do alchemy and stuff, too, because they're trying to, like, get their bodies ready for this stuff and then if well, you have a loving partner you can really work with it but you know you can it's interesting listening to damien Eccles. he was saying that they, they were definite elitists 
oh, we only got this information on the Golden Dawn because of Israel Regardi. They did not. They wanted to dump all this stuff. There was a point where we almost lost all of this information. You know, that's the interesting part. It was their desire of secrecy um, and willingness yeah. to, to, you know, we're very fortunate to have this information. Imagine yeah, so you, if we didn't. Right. You know? Alistair Crowley released a lot of it. Right. But then Israel right. Regardi came along and said, no, it, he wanted to correct they studied together. He was obsessed with Crowley for a while until he had some arguments, right? So Crowley was like, yeah. okay, it's do what thou wilt. And regard, he's like, no, 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 it's do what God wills. But it's the same thing. So you could see how they were mirroring each other, kind of in well, a way. Israel Regardi said that Neville Goddard was the greatest magician. As really? He has an article. That's what I find fascinating, knowing what I know about Aleister Crowley. And Neville Goddard was the most simplest and most difficult technique. Um, but yeah, I'm a huge fan of Regardi and I love to listen to those old recordings of him actually doing invoking the LBRP. And stuff. Yeah. Those just sound amazing, you know, cause you, you never know if you're doing it right. There's always that little voice that says, I'm probably totally jacking this up. Right. Uh, yeah. So you go and listen and he was amazing. Um, and I, I just wonder, there's probably more. I'm, I found a new book by him the other day is he has more than just the middle pillar. He's got and, a ton of books. Yeah, Garden of Pomegranates is my favorite. If you Garden want to understand the, the Kabbalah, one I just found, and I was like, "Yeah, I don't remember this." That's mostly Kabbalah, Tree of Life stuff, I think, right? Yep. Um, but, Absolutely. And I don't understand the Tree of Life, and I have it up on my desk right now. Just, <laughs> I, you know, I, yeah. I have no understanding. I, I've I've tried to understand the Kabbalah, and uh, you know, people have asked me do an episode on. You know, supposedly also Neville Goddard, Kabbalah is a way of teaching the Bible that's basically through numbers. Yep, it's Gnosticism. And there's a different interpretation of the Bible once you understand this biblical, you have to understand the Hebrew language to understand the numbers. And then once you understand the actual n numerical meaning of the Bible, then it, it all changes. They used to teach this, I guess, one person at a time. It was to pass down through the ages. And Neville Goddard and Joseph Murphy were two that were taught by the science of the Kabbalah, understanding the Bible. But yeah, I'm I'm interested in the Golden Dawn. Is there a Golden Dawn now? Is yeah. it just a joke? Is it a, is there, what is, when you look at the organization, which one's the legit one that's affiliated from the beginning that has all the old records? I can tell is you there, the lines of secession actually, if, but maybe that's for an off air yeah. conversation, but right. Um, <laughs> right. there is a reason why the Rosicrucians, which is what Golden Dawn really is, it's just a different version that comes into these understandings of uh, higher energetic right. stuff. Uh, they used to come out, they were chiropractors, scientists, profound people, right? They would come out every 100 right. and, 111 years and make themselves public. They would do their work, right. push their message out to the public, and then go back in and hide again. So did I they remember really when the Rosicrucians up? did that because they, there was a period like in the 80, 90s, wasn't it, when they made themselves available, and right. I went and got all their like training materials and stuff, and then they, I got a note that said, you know, we've gone through our little phase here, and we are withdrawing now. That's exactly right. So, yeah, see, yeah. and they do that for a reason because they they figured out that there is an energetic um, process to this. There's a balance of unlocking our potential that can't happen overnight because of natural processes that has to be released slowly to the public. And this is another reason why they kept a lot of the stuff secret, especially uh, sexual alchemy and things like that, because uh, man, I can get into a big long discussion about this, but that, bring it. that whole thing, we only got like five minutes here, so, but we can do something for the <laughs> patrons after the show. But that whole thing is one of the reasons why releasing that information to the wrong people with the wrong intentions that are all about what you were calling self-love, that whole right. thing caused a ripple effect of what we have today in these organizations of just, I can go on all day, pedophiles, whatever, just bad energy altogether. There's just, there's just, it's, ne it's a negative, manipulative, dominating energy and guess what? It's over for them. They, they they can they think that they can do whatever they want. They've they've been doing it all this time. But th what's happening now on the earth can't be stopped. And you can see the death cries of that of that movement. I see it now. Uh, you, you, it's going to get weird before it gets better. But you can see it. It's funny, dude. I'm I'm a pretty compassionate person, but 
people like that i I don't care if they disappear off the face of the earth honestly you know i just don't (laughs) understand but but here's the i found the best way for me to respond to them is to is to be loving about them uh if you meet a negative spirit in an out-of-body experience uh the absolute key is you if you're smart enough they're scared to death of you because if you send them love they get depolarized and sent yeah. backwards to the start of the game, and it messes everything up. So they go after dumb people that are easily manipulated and stupid. But if they come upon somebody like us that is aware, I'll, I'm going to start loving you. I'm going to imagine you that you're my grandmother, and something terrible happened to you. And, oh, man, I feel so sorry for you. I love you. And then suddenly they lose all their power that was been based in that negative. They can lose it in an instant. Mm-hmm. So they're always on the fringes manipulating other people. Because they can't risk coming into contact with somebody with that knowledge, right? They're always on the fringes using other people to do their d- dirty work, right? And eventually they won't even have that because the, the, our first instinctual response is to be angry. But these people are us too, man. And that's the thing that we're going to start realizing. We see ourselves it's, in our worst enemy. It's the children that I that. feel bad for, though. Like, I, I just, yeah. I Of them... Yes. Uh, and of the, you know, in whatever evil has been partaken. Uh, but that is just a part and parcel of so much more. It's just so much, right? It's, uh, uh, but it's over for them, in my opinion. They are getting move, shut down move, left and right, aren't they? Just left and right mm-hmm. of these organizations. Didn't they? Right. They you can busted. still see it in politics in, 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 in huge, I mean, they're rich. They control the wealth. Uh, you can still see it in politics. So yeah. it's going to be a rough ride, uh, but there it is unstoppable. And it's going to be because people just are becoming more understanding and aware. You can't manipulate us anymore. And once that happens, everything's going to change. We will see the truth. We'll start to remember the truth because we'll, we'll have access to it. And it's exciting because it, it's going to mean that but we will have to find a way to forgive the worst of us because we're all one, even the worst of us. And that's hard to do. I'll that's get there, hard brother. to do because you know <laughs> what I mean? It's hard, yeah. but we can do it. I think if we can understand the importance of it, because that's the way we stop it. Right. That's the way we stop it. It's, is is by loving our enemies in a certain way to depolarize them and take away their power. Well, man, well said. Thank you for coming on the show. We do got to roll out of here. TheRealityRevolution.com. Type in The Reality Revolution on YouTube. If there's anything else you want to plug for spending this time with us, please plug away before we got to roll out of here, Brian. Oh, man, just uh, I please watch this show, Lighting the Void. That's what I want to plug. Right. Thank you for having me on. All yeah. right. I support the show whenever you get a chance. You have uh, some great guests, and keep on doing what you're doing, man. Yeah, same to you guys. Same to you. And you guys, uh, all the links, I'll put the links in the archives. We'll try to get those out before the weekend, too, uh, as fast as I can, I promise you guys. Stay tuned for the Secret Teachings with Ryan Gable. Big shout out to Pacho, my producer, making all this happen. You guys in the Fringe FM chat, uh, the Fringe FM team, especially for enduring and sustaining. And as we go through this transition, and all of you, uh, void walkers out there i love you music was by steezy stevie and crone oaks stay tuned for the secret teachings coming up